pause waiting for mail and it seems to be taking forever. So we've had this water heater for years now, probably seven or eight years. It used to be hooked up to the old heat exchanger in the Perkins and I installed the beta and I haven't hooked it up yet uh, to the water heater. So what happens is when the engine's running, the antifreeze coolant runs through the water heater, heats the water in that tank. And uh, now we got hot water when we're running the motor. Currently it's 110 volt AC water heater. Energy suck. And well, it doesn't suck as much energy as some of our other electrical appliances. But, it runs uh, longer though. It has to run like an hour. Well, it runs more than that. It takes about two hours to heat a tank from scratch. But uh, yeah, um, we're going to run some antifreeze coolant through this thing and uh, get it all hooked up so we can have hot water anytime we run the engine. So Which should have been done years ago, but I just never got around to it. I didn't have a long enough hose because the takeoffs for the water. That's your reasoning? Are, you didn't have a long enough hose. So. Yeah, so the uh, obviously the beta is uh, it's marinized in the UK, so everything is BSP, which is British straight pipe thread fitting. So I'm looking for a, because there's such limited room for a straight hose barb, this thing comes 90 degrees off the side of the engine. Um, anything you can find around here in Mexico is national pipe taper. Perfect. Which is American threads. So I'm going to do some wangling on this. Uh, I found an NPT 90, which is female thread by male thread. And I'm going to see if I can hit that with a wire wheel and then make up the ceiling surfaces with Teflon tape, which you use anyway, and or pipe dope, maybe not even pipe dope. I don't like that idea of thread sealing compounds in the cooling system, but uh, yeah, I just got to route the hose through the holes in the floor and then connect them to the engine and then bleed all the air out, run the engine for a little bit, let the thermostat open up and bleed all the air out of it. So when we ordered the engine, we had these uh, valved takeoffs installed, uh, one underneath the uh, heat exchanger and one on the back of the engine. Those just have valves on them. They have threaded, uh, threaded barbs installed as well. So you can just open them up, hook up the hoses, and be done. Anyway, I got these things rotated around where I didn't need to use any standard American National Pipe Taper threaded fittings. Everything has to exit and come forward under the floorboards and up into the water heater closet right here underneath this cabinet. I'll pop a couple of holes in the floor and then I'll be able to run this hose here. Estimate the length, cut it off a little long. Okay. I got to uh, bleed off the coolant or get the air bubbles burped out. I got one, I've got this one is the return uh, hooked up to the bottom of the uh, heat exchanger. And this one back in here is loose. And I think I'm going to take a, a little funnel and try and fill up some of the area inside the water heater here. So there's a procedure outlined on the beta in the beta marine manual. Fire up the engine, let it come up to operating temperature, top up the header tank here and uh, evacuate air out of the system and then check it and make sure hot water is being made and make sure the engine doesn't overheat. So this is the uh, antifreeze I'm using. This is the CAT uh, extended life coolant. I think it's a 50-50 mix of uh, coolant antifreeze. It's red in color. So it went down quite a bit, the level did, when I uh, opened up the lower valve below the uh, heat exchanger here. So... That's good. The hose, there's going to be probably an air bubble trapped inside the water heater. So I'll have to see how that works out once the thermostat opens. I'll have to run the engine at the next temperature. I think the last hose connection here at the back of the block. All right, valve's open. Let's run the engine. Not quite 140. So, topped it up quite a bit actually after starting it. So, there is a little bleeder in the thermostat. And, uh, I'll check it again once the thirty staff starts flowing. It should be open at about 150, I think, 150, 160. Cool appears to be circulating through the heat exchanger. <laughs> All right, that's 15 minutes circulating through, and doesn't look like uh, the temperature's gone above 160. It's sitting there pretty nice and steady, so I'm going to go ahead and 
carefully open this up because it's probably going to be hot and under pressure. Everything's dry. All my connections, there's no leaks or anything. So beer's coolant is circulating through. We are not overheating, so that's good. Beautiful. Not too much of a level drop in the coolant. Do a little faucet check. Yeah, I can feel the water starting to warm up in the uh, in the water. Here. So that's a good thing. I will top up the uh, coolant one more time. Let it run again and double check it. Run it for another 15 minutes, like this, like it says in the uh, user manual. And check it one more time. I don't know, it smells pretty good. And the letters, chocolate, churros, 40 pesos. Do you want a churro? Hola! ¿Qué tal? Churro, por favor. Yeah? Eat a churro. Here's your churro. How are they? Pretty nice, thank you. They're pretty good. Don't love it to All right, so we just walked through all the mayhem that is uh, carnival. Uh, this isn't even that bad. I mean, it's really early. Yeah, we only cut we we cut it like in half, of, like walk half Malacan. But uh, yeah, nice little sunset. It's like a free car. It's like a free hair. Yeah. Well, it's free until you want to eat a churro or something. Yeah, I mean, you have to pay admission. Yeah. You go see her, you have to pay admission, right? Yeah, exactly. Typical Rich and Jenny fashion, we're back in the boat before dark. <laughs> you just sit down and stay here if you want until it gets dark uh, for some reason. Now we're supposed to go over and play games with uh, Evan, Evan and, and Bianca. And her, his mom. Evan's mom and boyfriend. boyfriend. Yeah. So, grab a couple of beers and Greg, give that thing a go. So I got some reflective tape. I'm making some flashers to take in the water with me when I dive and spearfish. If we can ever get out of uh, La Paz, I'll be heading up to the islands and hopefully uh, I get to jump back in the water a little bit before we uh, continue north. Got out of shape. Round off the corners, drill a hole in each end and a chamfer bit just to clean it up a little bit. And sand the edges, or you can scrape them with a utility knife. Jenny doesn't like that noise. Or you can even flame it with a torch. Just take off the sharp corners. So now I just want to lay this out with the uh, reflective tape and to make a couple of marks to where I want to bend it. So I just clamped a piece of metal here on the flasher plastic where I want it uh, bent so I can use the heat gun and have Hands free. Yep. So what you're looking for is just a little angle like that. Now just peel and stick. This reflective tape I got at Home Depot in the, uh, I don't know, it's where they sell the toe straps. It's like safety tape for trailers and stuff. So it's part red and part silver reflective tape. So I'll do a silver side and a red side. Ooh, shiny. All right, now I'm just gonna crimp some swivels to it and add a little lead weight to the bottom of it. This one I'm gonna use a little snap swivel and some 400 pound monofilament. Uh, once I crimp it, it'll be, let me just spend in the water. Since everybody loves DIY projects so much, all right, we're back. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. I was wondering when I was going to get that. <laughs> Jenny stuck a camera in front of my face first thing this morning. You know, that's not going to go in there. Uh, crooked. <sighs> Ruined. Okay. No, I didn't really have anything to say. Just that. Mm -hmm.